Hi everybody, my name is Marco. I'm a developer advocate at Ripple X. And in this presentation, I'm gonna show you how to interact with the XRP ledger with JavaScript. If you are a JavaScript developer, you can go to our um, documentation page and you can, can find a shortcut to to this document that will walk you through some of the concepts and especially it'll start talking about the library that you can use um, with JavaScript. It's called xrpl.js and you can you can install the package if you're using um, Node. I'm, I'm gonna be demoing how to use this package to do an XRP transaction on the XRP L. So here you can you can see um, previously how, how to install it and I'm gonna walk you through that but then uh, you will see like how to use it so for example every JavaScript app that uses this library will in a way do the same thing it will first um, instantiate this client class uh, creating like this object and then you will be able to um, use some methods of that object to connect uh, to the network via web sockets. Um, all that connection, it's going to be abstracted away using this xrpl.js. So the structure will be open a connection, then doing whatever you need to do, like exchanging messages with the, with the ledger, and then you will disconnect. All of these are functions that uh, will run asynchronously. Uh, most of these things will take some time and they are promises so instead of uh, using code that uh, otherwise would be blocked so we're using this uh, asynchronous pieces of code uh, using the async and await uh, keywords uh, in order to as I said uh, send XRP we have a complete guide uh, you can actually without um, writing any code see the full flow with just a click of a button here what it creates it's um, like a key pair public key and secret key this is uh, on testnet it will also the faucet will put a thousand xrp then you will uh, be able to, as I said, connect to the network with the same piece of code that I described before that will result in just uh, a demonstration of a connection. And if you saw the previous video, uh, I talked about the fundamentals. Basically, we need to prepare a message before we can sign it. So here, preparing a transaction means that I'm gonna I'm gonna put like uh, what public key the money is going from and where's it going to. The amount um, here that I want to transfer that corresponds to actually 20 XRP because we have six decimals. So again, uh, preparing this transaction also requires some other parameters that you will be able to get with um, using this autofill method. So what it will do is that it will go to the network, check the state, meaning that uh, what's the, what is the sequence of the ledger that we're in, we're gonna check like what it's the amount of XRP that the transaction will require. 
and uh, we will use that information in the message that uh, will be signed. You can see the, the autofill method will return something like this. And this, this is all the message that needs to be signed and then sent to the network in order to, to move uh, XRP around. Here you will uh, be able to see how using your private key you can sign the message that was prepared. We're going to console log um, the hash, which is the, the, the footprint of the digital footprint of the message. And you will also see the sign um, message as well. That it's the, the, the digital signature that will be validated by, by, the, by the nodes and then by, by the entire network. So here you can see how it looks like a sign message and the, the footprint that I mentioned is also called hash. And at the end, the, the thing that you need to do is once that the message is signed, that doesn't mean that uh, we have sent it to the network, it will, it will have to, to send it uh, using this submit and wait um, method as well that it's um, a method of the client object the same that uh, we use to connect with the network and do the other stuff and boom this is exactly what interacting with XRPL means uh, this is the response to the message that we sent and we can see that the payment um, was made uh, in this result means that it was successful so again this is a flow I can walk you through the concept I'm gonna be like demoing how to do it like on a separate on a separate uh, environment so what I did this is uh, visual um, studio code and basically what I did is just copy that those pieces of software that I that I walk you through it's the same thing um, opening the connection preparing the message and then I put this the only thing that I changed is that I used my own credentials uh, for example and also one thing that it's different is that it uses this XRP to drops if you don't want to add like those six zeros you can um, use this XRP to drops which is the, the 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 this this unit of account that it's the the minimum and you will not have to put the 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 zeros as in the previous example so for example let's let's send 12 XRP and again without the zeros it, it does the same thing it will cancel log uh, the prepared message that it's instruction to make the payment it will also uh, input what's the cost that it's coming uh, again from the autofill function that will go and check the network and 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 finalized to prepare the, the message and then it, it uses the same submit and await that um, method as well okay so I'm gonna run this in the terminal okay And you can see that the um, thing that it does, well, first it will it will lock the public key that corresponds to uh, this secret key. So you can do this with uh, using this from seed method of the wallet object, and basically this proves that the public key it's derived from the private key 
So using this, you can, from a secret key, uh, generate the public key. Then it will also uh, lock the prepared transaction uh, using the, um, the autofill. Uh, the, the, the autofill method as well you can see it here the same fields and here it's the actually I submitted this because I put the code as well to submit the transaction and the response is over here saying that the transaction happened um, there is a success actually I edited the, the amount but I didn't save the file so it did, it did it with the previous amount so for example if I want to run it again um, it will do the exact same thing but with the 12 XRP now that I saved it okay so here what information do we have so this is the response that comes from from, from the network so we we can see the we can see the 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 transaction signature but we can also see the sequence right the you can use this this all this information if you want to check afterwards um, for example, let's 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 do something like this. This will. What I did here was to transfer funds to to this account, right? So what we can do is we can go to the explorer. Here you can see the new the new. Um, they're not blocks, they're, they're the new ledger versions. Um, this is the, the test net. You can also check what's happening on, 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 on live net as well. You will see how the network reaches consensus and a new uh, version of the ledger will be created, which will be identified by the sequence number, that it's this one here. I'm gonna switch to test net, that is the one that I use for the transaction. I'm gonna search for the address that I sent a payment to. Uh, I remember, if you remember, I sent 12 XRP, and you will see here a lot of details. For example, this transaction had 